<laughs> All right, Vinny Galante is here with us today, and we're going to uh, talk about a very interesting topic, which I'm interested in because I'm 45 years old, and it's basically how to gain muscle, how to stay in shape. I would assume, you know, more advanced uh, after 40 years old, more advanced meaning like, you know, as, as far as bodybuilding goes. You know, it's, it's ever since, uh, you know, I had my injuries in my late 40s, mm -hmm. and I was happy before I, I got hurt. I was really in a content place with my training. Um, I, was, I was happy with life. Everything was going good. Um, and then I got hurt back-to-back, uh, -back on nine anchors in this shoulder, and then a year later, five in this shoulder. Um, so what I'm about to talk about probably would never have evolved if I didn't get hurt. Mm -hmm because I would have probably continued training the way I was training. Um, but unfortunately that I had to go through it, but fortunately um, I've been helping a lot of people the last couple of years getting through their surgeries and shoulder surgeries and injuries and how to get around them and how to train a little bit differently as you get older. So you can not get injured. Um, but it's so hard because I talk to a lot of guys who are strong and who can handle like, like stupid weight still in their fifties. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I tried to like talk to them and say, you're not going to put any more muscle on, but if you change your training, you can like make the muscle look different and better. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, you know, we're in this sport too, because we do have egos and it's hard to put those egos aside. That, that's the truth. Right. You know? Absolutely. So, but things seem to start changing after 40. Uh, well, it did for me anyway. And injuries aside, I mean, you know, my metabolism kind of slowed down. I used to be able to change one or two things in my diet and, you know, but the, bat, the fat would just fly off like nobody's business. Now it takes a hell of a lot longer. A lot of, a lot of things uh, I need to change, more cardio and diet harder and so on and so forth in order to see half the results that I used to. Uh, I still train pretty much the same way, but I don't kill it with the, with the weight, with the heavy weight as much as I used to, but like you, and that's because of injuries. Cause I had an operation on my bad three, uh, I have a cervical spine fusion. So I had three, uh, uh, herniated discs that had to be removed, replaced, and then fused. So if, since then, like, I don't really deadlift heavy. I don't really squat heavy. But I'm I'm still interested in trying to look good after 40 and so on and so forth. So somebody, let's say somebody like myself, we'll start off with like somebody like myself, or I mean somebody like you who's even more advanced than me. What can you do to go about making gains after 40 years old, and like you said, be content with your training? So you know, I used to like you know. I for me, the era that I competed in, I laugh. Well, I used to laugh at some of the, the, the terms that are used today. Like, we never called certain things. Like, we never called cardio before breakfast fasted cardio. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We never you know? did that. We just got up and did cardio. Yeah. You know? yeah. Somebody was like, yeah, I'm, I'm adding cardio before breakfast. Right. That, it wasn't like, you know, we had a name for everything. And the other thing was, um, you know, today there's no days off. And, you know, I used to be like, hey, you, you have to have a day off, right? Mm -hmm. Well, now the way I look at it is there are no days off with your nutrition and your recovery. Mm -hmm. So there's a day off actual training, yes. But there's no days off um, with the discipline that's needed to pay attention to your recovery and pay attention to your nutrition because, you know, um, that's, that's the biggest thing. Being disciplined to uh, be 100% on that. So the first thing I would say is whatever training program you're going to use, whether it's a three-on-one-off, four-on-one-off, uh, two scheduled days throughout the week off from training, whatever, whatever the case may be, you got to base your recovery around that. And um, depending upon – your finances, 
what you can afford to go and do. Like, you know, in my area, we have uh, Tina, the stretch boss. We have um, uh, other people that do, you know, cupping, scraping, ART, all that kind of stuff. Uh, cryotherapy, all the things that I've incorporated over the last five years to help me recover and to have success in doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is intensity. You got to have a plan when you go into the gym. You got to have a systematic, I mean, you got to put, it's, I, I say it all the time, you got to put the ego at the door, but you have to go into the gym with knowing, okay, I want to tackle this rep scheme with this weight, but how do I get there? Because really the truth is when we were in our 20s and 30s, we could pick up a weight, get a pump like that, mm -hmm. easy, quick. We didn't need to worry about our tendons and ligaments getting warmed up before anything. There was no issues. Now there's issues. Mm -hmm. So what I've done, I do this program now. I, I took away from the 5x5 five five program, kind of revamped it to um, my needs. So, for instance, let's say um, right now uh, I'm going to pick barbell row, okay? Bent over barbell row. Um, I wanted to get conditioned to row 275 pounds again, 315, 315. I want to do that again. I haven't done that in a while, but how I approach it. So the, what I do is, um, right now I'm at, I'm, I'm at 225, but let me explain. Mm -hmm. So I'll take 95 pounds, two sets, five reps. That's it. Just five reps pulling and squeezing. Then 135 for five reps. Mm -hmm. I do sets of that. Now, some people might think that's a, like too much work, but uh, too much, too many sets. But for an older guy, we need more warm up, more time to, we got to start sweating before we're doing anything. And then 185 for five reps. And if I feel good, maybe I'll go to the 225. But usually I'm doing two sets of every set that I get to before I do an increase in weight. And then when I get to 25, it's just five reps. Mm -hmm. And if those five reps feel heavy, I can wait, do another set. Because usually, I don't know if you ever experienced this, you can pick up a weight and go, oh, wow, that felt heavy. What? I, and, I, and then I used to like, Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna add 20 pounds to that or, or 30 pounds. Well, that's kind of silly because if 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 225 felt heavy, why go heavier? Mm -hmm. Right? I want to make it feel comfortable. I don't want to be uncomfortable with in the in, in the sense of like, oh, I might aim for an injury right now. I want to be uncomfortable with the workout that it's hard. Two nice. different things. Gotcha. Right. If, I, if 225 feels still a little stiff to me, like I'm, I'm not warmed up, if my elbows aren't feeling good, if my shoulders don't feel good, I'll do another set. And usually by that time, we're, we're like six or seven sets in already. And that's just my warm up. All right. Now I'm ready. Now I'm ready to go off the wall. Now I'm aiming for 20 reps. And usually, I'm getting pretty good form and I'm not getting 20. I might be getting anywhere between 13 and 16 reps, 17 reps sometimes until I can get to 20. Then I don't increase the weight. Okay. So it's all about intensity. It's all about just going balls, balls out. Cause for me, I'm the kind of guy that responds to like high intensity, high reps. Okay. And I'll probably do maybe two, definitely two sets, maybe two sets of a high intensity set like that. Mm -hmm. But by the time I do the second set, third set, I'm not getting anywhere nearly close to, you know, 15. I'm getting maybe around nine, maybe right. 10. Right. But those are really deep. Like I'm feeling it deep in my back by that point. Mm -hmm. But I had to do all those five reps to get to that kind of intensity. Okay. So now I think uh, I did that three weeks in a row. And the last time I did it was uh, this earlier this week. And when I did 225, it was an easy, easy 15 reps. 
And I actually stopped on purpose. I did two sets of that, and I, I was able to get two sets of 15. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I stopped, some people would say, well, what now isn't that an indication to go either higher reps or more weight? Yes, it is if I were 25 years old, but I'm going to be 55, and I have to know when to pull back. Right. My next work, I'm going to have a different approach, and I'm going to do something different at getting to 225, and I might add probably, I don't know, maybe 245 to 275. Mm -hmm. And I'm for that. that, that'll be my next approach. You got to have a lot of patience and you have to have, you have to have the ability to put the ego at the door and know when to say, okay, wait a minute, this was easy today, but I'm not, I'm not ready for it. I'm going to wait till the next workout. Right. Some people do and you know, and they have injuries. Not to say I can't get an injury again. I'm not saying that. I'm just trying to not have an injury. Yes, yeah, I got yeah. it. All right, so for, let's say somebody like myself <clears throat> who is uh, not squatting like he, he used to and not deadlifting like he used to. Because when you're first coming up, and even, even more so, you got to deadlift. You have to squat. This is what everybody's telling you. You got to squat to put size on your legs. You got to deadlift to put size on your back, right? But now you get to the point in your life where you just you just can't. And if you if you if you do, you risk injuring injuring yourself again. Is it possible to put some size on your back or on your legs at the age of forty without? those compound movements that, that, that everybody says is necessary. So let me answer that question by saying, um, yeah, you, you can, and yeah, you should still keep them in the program, but you don't necessarily need to go heavy. Okay. 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 So when Kevin Lavrone was making his comeback in 2016, mm -hmm. uh, Dennis was very vocal about Kevin Lavrone losing legs prior to the contest mm -hmm. um and we were all anxious to have him get on stage and i think we all were let down a little bit on how his legs were not up right but i'm a thinker when it comes to training and i thought there's got to be something he didn't do he probably stayed with the basics and stuck with what he knew from years ago mm -hmm. and I, not to, to, it's not a, a mock heaven. I think more like, oh, it just opened my eyes. Because if, if, like I said earlier, if I didn't have my injury, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. So if Kevin had huge legs going into the Olympia or his normal legs, right? Maybe I would have been like, oh, fuck it. I got to do, I got to like squat heavy and mm -hmm. I, I don't reproach. So I started thinking about, okay. How do I go about this? And at the same time, there was an article or something on Instagram, maybe Instagram, I'm not, I don't remember. It was uh, Evan Santapani talking about doing Bulgarian in his basement and um, how, you know, the Bulgarian split squat really improved his leg size. Mm. And I think he went back from an injury himself. So I've never done them. I always used to think like that was the girls exercise, you know, see the girls doing it in the corner right. and you know, yeah. Right. So, but when I saw, um, uh, Evan, Evan, sorry, I had a brain fart down. Five <laughs> and uh, when I, saw, I believe he had some good weights in his hands. He had a couple of heavy dumbbells. I thought, okay, I got to turn this up. Let me, let me do it. And I incorporated Bulgarian split squats and I incorporated really high rep squats into my program, like a Tom Platt squat. Like some days I go into the gym and, um, you know, I remember like it was yesterday. It had to be going, it's going back into, into the nineties. Casey Kucher, he's, uh, he retired as an IFBB pro, um, but he was more of an, an NABA guy. I think he won the first world and all that. And uh, he trained out of my gym at the time, strong and shapely. And I remember him squatting one day, and I just watched him the whole workout. 
I just stopped what I was doing. I, I just loved training, but Casey was a quiet guy. He didn't talk to anybody. He kept to himself. And I kept in the background and I watched him. And for the longest time, he just kept doing sets of 315. And I couldn't even, I can't tell you how many reps he was doing, but I, I said, fuck it. I'm going to go walk over to him when he's done. And he right. said, that's only squat, one hour of squatting. So that's what I incorporated into my, into my programs. Um, now where some days I just, when I, when I warm up, whatever I do for my warm up, I do not count as my workout. So if it takes me 20 minutes of leg extensions and leg curls to get everything going, get the juices flowing, get the knees feeling good, get a pump, get the blood flowing. I don't even count that. That mm -hmm. doesn't even, that's not in the factor. And then I go squat for an hour. And sometimes I just put on, you know, 95 pounds, five reps, 135, five reps, 185, five reps, 225. And now it's on. Now it's one hour of squatting 225 for as many as I can get. Mm -hmm. And train like that, your fucking legs are going to grow. Okay? Right. okay. Currently, I'm back up to 275 squatting mm -hmm. for sets of 15. So, you know, my strength is coming back the way it kind of close. I was never a strong guy. I was never somebody squatting over 365. I mean, I had my days when I did 405 mm -hmm. for reps. But those were far and few in between. And m my threshold was 315, 365. So I'm pretty happy right now doing 275 with controlled form. But yeah, you can squat and get bigger legs and you could get a bigger back by deadlifting a certain way. You don't have to do, don't do what you used to do. Change it up. You know, there's many variations of the deadlift. You can do bent over deadlifts, which are very good, which don't really... Like uh, for me personally, I feel like every time I pull a deadlift off the floor, I'm going to have a hernia. Yeah. You know, I, I just feel like it's not, it's just not meant for my body type. I right. feel like my blow up. I don't feel comfortable in it, but if I use a decent amount of weight where I can control the weight and pull it like a rack dead, but without hitting a rack, like I don't touch anything. The bar is free. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll do that. I'll do bent over deadlifts. Um, and you know, uh, a lot of Bulgarian split squats on my leg day. You know, not every leg day, but I do them. Right, 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 right.